Hello guys, this is the Sustainable Development Goals. Goal number one, no poverty. End poverty in all its forms everywhere. Hi guys, my name is Coach Alexander and welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm so glad you've come to this channel because monitoring and evaluation is what we do for a living. And it's not only because it puts food on the table, but if you look at the topic we're looking at today, it's all about M&E. We have a global project where there is the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, and we want to monitor and evaluate it to see whether it's actually achieving its intended purpose. So this is a long video, guys. I have timestamps in the description below. I'm try I'll try to summarize this long video so that you can navigate and not have to watch every sentence I say, but you can skip certain parts to the area you want. Okay, so recently I'm sure you're all aware that there's the 2020 Sustainable Development Report. And I have to say I reviewed I reviewed the report I think last week. And uh, I think people understood what is on the ground. We are not really progressing. So now what this video is doing today, guys, I thought we could analyze each of the indicators word for word, okay, so that we can fully understand why aren't things happening, okay? So we're going to look at the this report. It's not long. This section is not long. We are looking at one indicator, which is no poverty. Why is it doing so poorly, guys, you know? Why is it doing so poorly? So we're going to try to attempt to read these two pages and see from the UN's perspective what is going on, okay? So let's get started. So it says that even before the coronavirus pandemic, progress towards goal one had slowed and the world was not on track to end extreme poverty by 2030. Now, as the world anticipates the worst economic fallout since the Great Depression, tens of millions of people will be pushed away into poverty and doing years of steady improvement. As the economic impacts of the pandemic begin to be felt more strongly, the importance of robust social protection systems for safeguarding the poor and vulnerable is becoming clearer than ever. So, two is the need for effective emergency preparedness both for pandemics and other hazards that cause disasters. Okay, so already I can see what they're actually saying here is that um, before the COVID, we pretty much were not achieving our goals of ending poverty. There's, they use the word slowed down, okay? But like I said in the earlier presentation, we don't really know the true picture sometimes because where are they getting this data is some of this data may not be of high quality because many of these nations that are struggling with poverty may have weak systems okay so now something which has caught my attention just in this opening paragraph is that um, you know with the pandemic coming it worsens everything and you know guys in order to boost, to, I mean, remove poverty, the economic situation of a country must be, must change, you know. It must be doing fine, but really everything pretty much sucks. So they are saying, if you look at this, they are saying there must be a robust social protection system. Okay, but, I, you know, after reading this, I, I realized that not all the countries can actually finance this. I don't know how you, you look at it. U.S. is managing. I mean, you've got this, uh, because of the COVID, people have lost their jobs. But uh, I, I don't know how many. Of course, I've heard that some are not even getting these social protection benefits. But, uh, you know, with the U.S., the U.S. is actually uh, putting money aside to people who've lost their jobs, to businesses that have had to close down, okay? So USA is trying to do it, UK the same, but I'm not sure how countries in Africa are faring, 
Okay, so I don't know how practical this is. I just listen to the news. I may not have all the facts. Okay. So effective emergency preparedness. Yeah, that one cannot be overly emphasized. Okay. Okay, so now the COVID, let's go to the next part. It says COVID-19 shifts focus on the global goal to end extreme poverty. So the share of the world's population living in extreme poverty declined from 15 0.7% in 2010 to 10% in 2015. However, the pace of global poverty reduction has been decelerating. Now, cast estimates put the global poverty rate in 2019 at 8.2%. Okay, so it looks like something is happening. Okay, and they give a graph that shows that something is happening indeed. So from 15.7% and it goes all the way to 8.2%. So they are saying that the forecast in 2029, 2021 is that it will, it will rise. Okay. So again, it would be interesting to know how this data is collected, who is feeding into this system. You know, it's really interesting to know. Okay, but you know what? Before I go any further, guys, what do you think of this proportion of people living below $1.9 a day? What do you think of that as a poverty indicator? Because, you know, uh, when you calculate, okay, let's say this is $2. So we are simply saying that for somebody not to be in poverty, they should be earning a monthly income of $60, okay? Because if you if you multiply that 60, I mean, that's $2 per day, by 30 days, you get $60 a month. But guys, let's be honest. I don't know, maybe, I mean, people live in different parts of the world, but can someone really survive on $60 a month? Because let's face it, the economic situation is getting worse. Prices are likely to increase. And this $60 a month may not mean anything when economies around the world are failing. So again, even when they say that there's this reduction, we may not really be painting a true picture. It may actually be getting back to here, 10% or even 15%, because they now, with the COVID, the, the economies are facing, uh, failing, prices are ri rising, it's getting hard to find money, you know? So it would be interesting to know how this is really done. Even before COVID, baseline projections suggested that 6% of the global population would still be living in extreme poverty in 2030, okay? Okay, so this, I think, uh, my view is that if they can get it to 6%, I mean, that's really a good job, okay? Because that's a major decline. Uh, and uh, we are hoping that that can be something we can do. I mean, if there's that reduction, maybe we could say that something is happening. Maybe not at the pace of everyone. Okay, let's go down. And it says working poverty is expected to increase sharply as a result of the pandemic. Okay. The share of the world's workers living in extreme poverty fell by half over the last decade. From 14% to 7.1%. Okay, however, the pace of progress has slowed since 2013 requiring reinvigorated efforts to reach the 2030 target. Moreover, the impact of COVID-19 are projected to push millions more into poverty as of April 2020, recommended or required workplace closures around the world affected 81% of employers and 66% of on account workers severely limiting jobs and income. 
Okay. All right. So let's continue. The gender gap in working poverty had almost been bridged, but evidence is emerging that women are being dispor disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Young workers are exposed to poverty more systematically than adults as a result of inadequate earnings and deficits in job quality. In 2019, 12.8% of workers between the age of 15 to 24 lived in poverty, compared with 6.3% of workers over the age of 24. Okay. With the difference between youth and adult working poverty rates decreasing only marginally. These disparities are likely to be exacerbated by the COVID-19 crisis, which has already led to a sharp increase in unemployment and underemployment, a decline in labor income and job quality challenges. Okay, so I think enough has been said. I mean, they are, COVID really has affected everything. Okay, so now something I was talking about at the onset of this presentation is the social protection coverage. All right. And uh, as we can see already, proportion of vulnerable populations receiving social assistance, cash benefits, and unemployed persons receiving unemployment cash benefits, 2016 percentage. All right, so already you can see what is actually happening around the world. Okay, so, so now look at this. You've got, and now this is what I was saying, the, the Africa, for instance. Uh, look at this. These percentages are crazy. They're so low. People are not really receiving these benefits, social protection benefits, and yet... In these poor nations, employment is really hard to find. You've got Asia as well, which is very low, okay? But then, as you can see, Latin America, Australia, Europe, North America, America seem to be doing very fine, okay? So what does this tell you? This is not a good indication of what is in the world today because think about it when you have averages like when you say world when you generalize these statistics and say worldwide 22 percent receive unemployed unemployment benefits okay what that is telling you is that okay then also in africa but look at the gap 22 percent to three percent the gap is wide you see what I'm saying? So it's not really a true reflection. I wouldn't like to generalize like this because it doesn't give a, a, a true reflection of what is really transpiring, especially in these regions, which need... And mind you, Africa has a big population. Asia especially has big, big population, guys. So we can't really use this very well in this case. Okay, so they're saying that uh, maybe let me skip a bit. This uh, I'll just read wherever I can. The extent of unemployment benefits coverage varies substantially across regions. Okay, yeah, and this we've seen it. Okay, so now uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Is there anything else we can get out of this? All right, so that's where it ends. So now, looking at this, guys, um, you can already see that the, the reason for the poor results, the reason why the ending of poverty is going to be a challenge, is going to be because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, for me, I think... Everything we are doing today, we are giving, we are saying it's the COVID-19. We keep on saying that. But is there really something that we can do that is practical? I don't know. 
you know, because this end poverty thing is really big. It's a really big goal to achieve. And um, quite frankly, I think we just need to find something practical, something that we can work with. Because I think the only thing I can see here is they are recommending social protection systems, but these can't be financed. And, you know, if you've got the poorer nations, they, they will heavily rely on um, donor support. But these donors are also struggling to protect their own systems. So there must be a way in which something practical can come out of this so that uh, people are not worst hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But that being said, I think uh, maybe we're getting somewhere based on the statistics. And uh, let's see how the 2021 report will look like. And I think uh, in the next session, I'm going to talk about another indicator and we'll look at it, we'll discuss it. And uh, please, if you haven't yet done so, subscribe to this channel because I post regular updates on m and And I want you also to, I have some courses I'm running. Please, if you have time, you can enroll in those courses. Also, be sure if you want, if you really want to have personal coaching in monitoring and evaluation, you can write to me anytime. Okay, and then we'll arrange personal coaching, except it comes at a fee, but I've done it with other people and they've gotten the maximum benefit out of it. So until we make, until we meet again, I've been your host, Coach Alexander, and see you on the other side. Bye.